Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the witnesses for being here for this emergency meeting to discuss the failure of the uh, Canadian transport system and, and the, uh, the impact that it had on Canadian travellers over one of the most important travel seasons of the year. Of course, we recognize that this is now the second travel season in a row where there have been major travel disruptions, uh, where uh, passengers have been stranded in airports, stranded abroad, separated from their baggage, um, a, a situation, quite frankly, that we were told uh, in the fall by the minister had been resolved, that he was convinced and had confidence that uh, the repeat, there would not be a repeat of the travel chaos from the summer. And of course, we've seen uh, horror stories where uh, I would argue that it was even made worse. My first question is for Sun Wing, for Mr. Corrado. <clears throat> On what date did uh, Minister Algabra reach out to you directly to discuss Sunwing's failure to return uh, Canadian passengers home uh, as as their scheduled flights were? I'd like to know on what date minister, you, you first discussed this with the minister directly. Thank you for your question. Um, we were updating the CTA uh, from December 26th on, and then Transport Canada from the 27th. Uh, right. had uh, my, 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 my question and was the minister directly. When when did the minister get in touch with you about this matter? Uh, we, again, just checking my notes here. Um, I believe we, our first contact with the minister was on the 29th of December. Okay, so about a week after things had had started. I'll ask the same question to uh, Mr. Gibbons and WestJet. When did the uh, when did the minister himself? Uh, when did you speak with the minister or his office uh, directly? On what date? I don't have the exact date, Mr. Strahl. I know that our chief executive texted uh, the minister very early on in this to advise him that um, you know the storm was coming, so to speak, and that uh, they would be needing to have regular conversations and. He also offered the minister to make his entire team available to the department should they have any questions or concerns about our operations and our decisions. So that was fairly early on. I'll say that was you know December twentieth, twenty first, whenever the whenever the incidents really started to uh, to take shape. So that's when you reached out. Did did you hear back immediately? Did you hear back in a week, uh, as we just heard from Sunwing? Did we? Uh, you know, what sort of timeline did you have for the minister to respond? Well, in terms of times of crisis, we've had developed very close relationships. This isn't the first time that there's been disruptions. So we've had communications with his chief of staff and their team and their department probably every day throughout the crisis at every level of our company and every level of the department and the minister's staff. And, uh, and, and they've, been, they've been fairly heavily engaged every step of the way. Okay, and I'll ask the same question of Air Canada. Um, were you in contact with the minister's office uh, from the outset, and how quickly was uh, was he able to respond to your your, your direct uh, contact with him? We have been in touch with various actors regularly throughout the last few months, but. In December, when everything started to transpire, we were in touch with them daily, including with the minister, in order to exchange information. Corrado, I'll come back to you. Um, uh, I think it's very concerning, obviously, what happened with your passengers abroad. We, we've heard your, uh, your reasoning for that. Uh, I do want to talk specifically, though, about um, your... Uh, operations in Saskatchewan. Um, I find it very troubling that that you would have booked travel and taken money from Canadians when you didn't have pilots lined up for the flights that you were selling. Um, so if you can advise this committee uh, on what, when did you learn that you wouldn't have these pilots available and how did you possibly book travel uh, for Canadians when you did not have crews or planes lined up to service them. This is a, a catastrophic failure and, and the stories are heartbreaking of people uh, cancelling weddings, losing trips of a lifetime, uh, just abruptly pulling out of an entire province. Um, how do you explain uh, a business model that allows you to take money from Canadians while you don't have the, the crews 
to deliver that service. Thank you for your question. Uh, as we began to prepare for this winter's operations last spring and identified our pilot requirements, we identified the requirement for 63 additional pilots that would fall under the foreign uh, temporary foreign workers program and we had previously availed of the, ourselves of this program several years back we were made uh, we were we had a certain amount of assurances from our our legal team that this should be a successful application and we proceeded down that road uh, on on the road to that application uh, Unfortunately, on December 9th, we were informed that uh, by the SDC um, that they were not going to give us a positive opinion on that and as such uh, could not use the foreign pilots. We immediately took action. We rebuilt our schedule, rebid our pilot rotations, brought additional subservice aircraft in to free up our own crew um, to bring into that marketplace. And we put some, some aircraft specifically into that marketplace uh, from a subservice provider. Unfortunately, even with all this, uh, in the midst of the storm, with the inability to position, with the inability to recover from the various locations, uh, duty day limitations, uh, we failed to deliver to the level we had expected to. Thank you very uh, much, Mr. Strahl, and thank you very much, Mr. Carr.